Hello everyone, this is Anna from CVCAT Realty. For those of you who don't know, CVCAT Realty is a relocation and investment agency. We support expats in relocating to Portugal and integrating into the communities. Our goal is to find the perfect location and perfect property for your lifestyle ideal. And we work in whole of continental Portugal with uh, current ongoing plans of expanding to the islands. So today I am going to be talking to you about Coimbra. And Coimbra is my birth town for those of you who don't know. So Coimbra is a very old city of Portugal and it is known for two things mainly which is universities and students, and medical facilities and research. So these are the two main um, things that make Coimbra move, so to say. Coimbra is a very central location when it comes to transportation. So although it is kind of in the interior, it is kind of in the middle of the main line uh, between Porto and Lisbon. So it's very easy to um, move anywhere and get to Coimbra and from Coimbra to almost anywhere that has public transport. You also are right next to um, highways. So overall, Coimbra is a very, very well-connected city. And that is for sure also one of the things that makes it very popular as a student city. You can get and leave Coimbra uh, using bus, train or car and all of the, th the above are pretty easy and accessible from Coimbra. So, regarding the students, Coimbra is one of the oldest universities in Europe. So, it is kind of the Oxford of Portugal, so to say. It's a very renowned university where most of the courses are connected to engineering and medical, also um, biology and uh, more technical courses, so to say, are the ones that are more renowned in Coimbra. You also legal, so legal engineering and uh, medicine, being legal and medicine the two main um, courses that are renowned in Coimbra. And it's a bit like Oxford, like I was saying, people that go to Coimbra like to brag that they went to Coimbra because it's hard to get into university, it has very high uh, and demanding um, entrance exams and entrance um, requirements, so uh, that is one of the things. But another curious thing is actually the um, student life. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Portugal has quite a few interesting traditions when it comes to the student life. And we have what we call praxes and tunas. And um, prax is kind of a ritual of uh, um, on boarding new students. So you have the senior students and the junior students and uh, the senior students prash, prashon, the junior students. So there is um, some controversy around the prash because some people took it a bit too far and on power trips and made the junior students make very unpleasant things and there was a, a bunch of uh, really serious incidents around Prashish. Uh, so they became a lot more controlled by the university. But there are also positive sides to Prashu because they kind of make the students interact with each other and get to know each other and create culture a lot faster. It's uh, a bit like the uh, company events that people don't really like to go or most people don't really like to go but overall they do improve the relationships over the um, uh, company members and being university everything is a lot more playful and youthful 
Uh, so you do have a lot of fun games or not so fun games, depending on who's uh, looking at them. Personally, as an introvert, I don't particularly enjoy praxe. I don't particularly enjoy getting that, uh, putting, pu being put on the spot. And as me, most introverts aren't particularly fond of praxe, but they definitely help getting to know a lot more students. And in Coimbra, you have a lot of traditions around university and praxe, uh, there's a, a whole range of things that uh, there's specific time frames. So when the university starts, there's a few months that you will do praxe. Then when uh, it's, uh, then there's queima dos fitas and there's a parade. Um, and well, it's Coimbra bursts around these kinds of events. So basically Coimbra will be full of youth and students and it can be loud and noisy for that and it will be very much the opposite of the touristic locations and so on. So it will be brimming with life during the academic year and a lot lot calmer during the summer. Although the tourism in Coimbra is growing, Coimbra is not one of the most touristic cities in Portugal at all. And you do have a lot more medical tourism than you do have um, tourism tourism. So cultural tourism, let's call it that. And the University of Coimbra, it has a hospital center. So it's called Centro Universitario da Universidade de Coimbra. And it's uh, basically a public hospital that is associated with the university. And it's the most renowned hospital in Portugal when it comes to research and new treatments. Um, it is very well equipped according to what the government says and what some of my um, family members that actually work there say. However, I would say it's not particularly well managed and the facilities are a bit run down. Uh, so you will be having a bit of a short of staff like in every hospital. But overall, you get very good care in that hospital. And for um, complicated cases, uh, more often than not, they get sent to this hospital as one of the most renowned research hospitals. So, like I was saying, you do have this duality in uh, Coimbra where you have a lot of senior people too because of the hospital uh, situation. And then you have the um, students. So, overall, when it comes to real estate in Coimbra, it's a bit of a mix because you have a huge demand for student housing. So, renting is not easy at all. And um, Coimbra is a very, very steep city. So you have, it's kind of built on a hill. So if you want to walk around Coimbra, you will be making a very good exercise. And believe me, I did that. So on the day that I was filming Coimbra and walking around the city, I did my watch counted 23 floors in steepness. So <laughs> that's what you can expect if you want to walk around Coimbra. Of course, in the riverside, it's uh, a lot flatter. And if you drive around, you get not to do the hills yourself. But overall, Coimbra is a very hilly city and a very um, steep city that makes a very good leg exercise, so to say. So I was saying that the center is, the historical center is actually on the top of the hill where the university and so on are. And you have a big square there that then connects to the old aqueduct where the botanical garden is. So all that area is officially the city center of Coimbra and it has been getting deeply recovered, thankfully, and it does have a lot of very interesting architectural, historical properties. Um, but overall, I would say that in Coimbra, 
you still have a long, long way to go when it comes to property and recovering property. You will still find a lot of rundown um, buildings. And from all my travels, I would say that Coimbra is one of the worst when it comes to ruined state buildings. You, every now and again you will come across something that is literally falling apart and it doesn't really give a good impression of course and although the city center is getting some recovery and you have some uh, the main streets are looking quite nice if you walk around the narrow center streets around the university and the church you will find a lot of very, very run-down buildings and that area is particularly hard to walk in. It's very steep with a lot of stairs and narrow roads and I don't recommend driving there either because <laughs> everything is very narrow. So because of this, Aldo Coimbra is developing quite nicely and the outskirts have been getting quite a bit of new construction and the uh, reverse uh, area, reverse side area also has been developing quite well. Um, Coimbra is not one of the most popular cities when it comes to property and expats, I would say. And the prices haven't been rising the same way that some other cities have. Uh, the Coimbra isn't as inflated as many other cities, so it, that can be seen as an opportunity. And it definitely can be seen as an investment opportunity. You can find very interesting opportunities for renovation of property. Like I was saying, these rundown buildings can be a great opportunity for renovation. Of course, you do need to have the available capital and time because licensing does take a long time in Portugal. So if you are looking to do an investment project and recover an old building either to sell or to rent, it's safe to assume a time frame more of minimum four years. So four, three to five years is the realistic. I think four years would be the, the realistic average. So that is something to consider. But overall, you can get a very, very good return in this type of investment. Like I was saying, it's just a matter of having the available capital uh, and time. So overall, like I was saying, the outskirts of Coimbra have been developing in a way more than the center of Coimbra. And you will have a lot, uh, some new neighborhoods and some areas have been developing very well. Like, for example, uh, near the, um, um, the stadium, uh, there are some uh, new neighborhoods there that are very well capped and have a lot of commerce around. So overall, when it comes to living in Coimbra, I actually think it may be nicer living in those uh, less central uh, neighborhoods where you still have everything around you. Coimbra does not have metro, but it has a very decent bus line and it's fairly easy to drive in if you don't know, go to the center center where you have the very steep and narrow roads that I personally don't like to drive in. <laughs> But that's, of course, personal choice and personal preferences. I'm just telling you a bit about my perspective. I did, um, although I was born in Coimbra, I never really lived long term in Coimbra. I go there a lot because I have family there. But my, um, my parents never lived in Coimbra, so I, I just saw it developed a, a bit more from an outsider uh, perspective. And like I was saying, um, I think the center, it's less run down, but it's not like you see a big difference like in some other cities, like for example Aveiro, where there was a huge involution when it comes to urban planning and um, city landscape, so to say. But Coimbra can have some very interesting uh, opportunities and the prices are average. And another thing that I think it's important to mention is that the one of the things that the town hall is currently doing is that it's recovering 
the train line that goes to the inside because there used to be uh, a train that connected to the inside um, small towns around Coimbra but that line was deactivated and now they are reactivating it so I would say that this will be a very interesting opportunity for people that are looking to live in an um, outskirts, out of city location that can still be accessible to the city. Because the outskirts of Coimbra up until this point do lose a bit due to accesses. You only have national roads that can be um, not very upkept and slow especially if you get like a, a truck or something and you are literally stuck behind it um but with this train public transportation will be a lot better because uh, you will still have the option of course of private transport and that will not change however uh now once this is completed and let's give it one or two years because everything in in portugal is slow <laughs> you will have public transportation to Coimbra and uh, a lot easier access. Likely it will be faster to get to Coimbra using the public transportation than to drive there, although of course you will be subject to the timelines and availability of said trains. So um, overall uh, what I was going to say is that it can be a very interesting location to invest in if you want a place on the outskirts of town that is still accessible because right now it's not the best accesses yet but it will gain a lot of value once this line is uh, up and running and the interior of Coimbra is actually a very beautiful uh, landscape a very um, green mountains and some water streams and some small waterfalls and kind of thing so it is an area of interest for people that want to be more in the nature but still have an access to the town or the city in this case Coimbra so yes overall i think Coimbra is a good opportunity do take in mind that if you want to go to Coimbra if you want to stay in the center you will be going through very steep roads. Coimbra is, like I was saying, a very active during the university time because there is a lot of students in Coimbra. I don't know the exact number, but someone in my team will put it here to tell you how the average of students in Coimbra uh, per year, it's a lot. <laughs> and it is a fairly active city you will have a lot of amenities and restaurants of course you don't have as wide of a range like porto and lisbon but you can find everything you need in coimbra so it's a pleasant city to live in and it's young cities and education is very well known so it can be very interesting for young families too what i was trying to say about students is republicas so within the University of Coimbra, and I think this is particular to Coimbra, I don't see it in a lot of other places, there are student republics, which are basically kind of political organizations within the um, university that kind of have their own set of rules and norms and organize events and parties and have their headquarters around the university and they usually have very particular ways of presenting and are usually kind of revolutionary you will be able to see a few um, pictures that i took of republics i came across while i was uh, filming uh, coimbra and it can give you a bit of an idea of what it is so students can become members of these republics and participate in the events and so on uh, and yeah it's kind of a, a Coimbra thing that it's very curious and the other thing is Tunis uh, Tunis are musical organizations within the um, university and in Coimbra Tunis are particularly well known because of Fado and the uh, Portuguese guitar 
that is says to set to originate in Coimbra and it is a, a 10 string guitar that is very hard to play. So tuners are basically um, groups of students that gather to make music and they play a bunch of different instruments, each of them, and there's usually a big group, let's say between 10 and 20 students, and they um, play, sing and dance and use uh, and gather um, tributes and um, money to do uh, student activities and events or even for the republics. So every now and again, when you are rock walking around uh, uh, a city like Coimbra, you may get to see um, tuna perform in the street, because they usually perform in the streets, around busy streets or coffee shops, or um, where a lot of people are gathering in general. And the, the point is exactly to gather uh, a bit of money to do student activities. And it's a, a very interesting thing here in Portugal. And Coimbra is probably one of the places where you will see the most tunas. But there are tunas in uh, most universities. And you will. Uh, there are even uh, contests uh, of tunas uh, that are made uh, nationwide. So that's another very interesting Portuguese university tradition. And overall, this is all I have to say in Coimbra and I think it's uh, a lot I hope that it's helpful and I would love to hear, hear your feedback and opinions that you have on Coimbra or other cities that you would like me to get uh, a video on so um, for those of you who don't know once again I am Anna the owner of Savy Cat Realty you can contact us to contact at savycatrealty.com and you can find all the information of how our services work on our webpage www.savycatrealty.com you we have both rental packages and purchase packages so we work both with rentals and buyers and we are always on our client side we don't have a portfolio to sell our main priority is always the best interest of our client and we work in the whole market so we work with private listings agency listings and we also do off-market networking whenever possible so if you do want to work with us do check our website or contact us directly to our email once again, I hope this was helpful. We do release new content every week, both here on YouTube and also on our website. We do have an informative blog there with lots of useful information you can check. And I once again love to hear your feedback and see you again next week.